Hi, I'm Weston. I love talking about the Astros, and welcome to part two of my grading series. Uh, today we're going to do the designated hitter and the outfield. So Jordan, Michael Brantley, Jake Myers, Chaz McCormick, and Kyle Tucker in this video. I put a poll up to add Miles Straw in this, and it was 50-50, so I'm going to not, because my vote would be not, because it will only make me sad. So, without any further ado, let's just get going with it. So we're going to start with Jordan Alvarez, and... Man, I love Jordan Alvarez, and, like, I know he's good, right? There are players I know are good, and then I look at all the numbers, and I remember, in fact, how good they are. Or, in some cases, I realize, in fact, how good they are. I knew Jordan was great. Jordan isn't just a great Astro. He's just a great player. He's a great talent. He borders on generational, I feel. I The guy is amazing. You look through his numbers, you look through his expected numbers, and it's silly how good he is. You look at expected numbers, you look at exit velocity, hard hit percentage, ex-woba, ex-slugging. He's a tank. He is a monster. And when he makes contact, it sounds like a gunshot when he really barrels the ball. It's amazing. This past season, he slashed 277, 346, and 531 for a WRC plus of 138. That was second on the team behind Kyle Tucker, and second to only Shohei Otani among all designated hitters, which now is going to be league wide. And he's still probably a top two designated hitter, even with it going to the National League. Fight me. I, he's incredible. And if anything, he underperformed this season. Expected batting average, expected weighted on base average, expected slugging, all of them, the expected numbers were higher than his actual number. So if anything this season, he was getting unlucky. Do you know how wild that is? That he had a 138 WRC plus and underperformed like that? <laughs> oh, he's going to be a destroyer of worlds next season. And you can look at Fangraph's expected things, their projections for him for 2022. Most projections have him around the 150 to 160 WRC plus mark, and they're usually conservative with numbers like that. So the fact that they're putting him that high is ridiculous. He was easily the second best designated hitter in all of baseball last year, and that is not an insult. That should be worn like a badge of honor, because the only designated hitter that was better than him was uh, Shohei Otani, and man... I think Jordan and Shohei Otani are going to have a very fun race for who is the better designated hitter in 2022. That could be really fun. He was incredible last season, and I expect him to dazzle in 2022 as well. For Jordan Alvarez in 2021, I'm going to give him a 9 out of 10. He was simply fantastic. Now we transition to the outfield, not just designated hitter, and we're going to start with Kyle Tucker. Uh... It's an open and shut case with Kyle Tucker, ultimately. Uh, elite this past season, not just in the sense of the Astros. He was a top 15 player in Major League Baseball. I think you could probably debate him into the top 10. I think that is a conversation to be had. He was that good. I mean, what, sixth best WRC plus last season? Maybe seventh, I believe. And that was after a bad start. May 9th onward, I already said this, best WRC plus in the league at like 178. He was magnificent, fantastic in the field as well. Last season, a 294, 359, 557 triple slash. That's incredible. 147 WRC plus, and again, that's after a bad five first weeks. Uh, expected Woba in the 95th percentile on Baseball Savant. Expected batting average in the 98th percentile. The 96th for expected slugging. His defense was amazing. There wasn't a knock to be made against Kyle Tucker. He's a top 10 player in baseball going into the season. He's a dark horse for the MVP, and I don't think enough people are talking about it. Last season, he was easily our best player, and man, he's just fantastic. So he is going to get the perfect 10 out of 10 rating from me. Next, let's talk about the center field position, and we're going to start with Chaz McCormick. So to me, Chaz is like the... Mom, can we get Kevin Kiermeyer? We have Kevin Kiermeyer at home. And after digging through the numbers, it's really hilarious how similar Kevin Kiermeyer and Chaz McCormick are. I mean, they're nearly identical. They are center fielders with elite defense and okay enough offensive numbers that they can get the starting job and play there more or less every day. I think he's going to be our number one center fielder going into 2022. I know him and Myers are going to have a 
competition for it. Myers, I believe, is going to be injured for the first week or two of the season, maybe the first couple of weeks. I, I don't think it's going to matter. I think uh, Myers is going to be a lovely fourth outfielder, but Chaz is, for me, the starting center fielder to go with into the season. Uh, this past season, comparing him to Kevin Kiermeyer, again, I think it's neck and neck. Uh, Kevin Kiermeyer slashed 259, 328, 388, so that's an OPS of 716. Chaz McCormick slashed 257, 319, 447. Can you see the similarities between the two of them? So, or McCormick's, excuse me, OPS was at 766. OPS plus for Kevin Kiermeyer, 104. Chaz McCormick's, 107. WRC plus, 101 for Kiermeyer, 109 for McCormick. Their defense, nearly identical. Kevin Kiermeyer was in the 98th percentile in both outs above average and outfielder jump. He had 12 outs above average. Chaz was in the 97th for outs above average and the 93rd for outfielder jump. He also had 11 outs above average, just, you know, nearly identical. Again, they're the same player. And actually, if you look at defensive runs saved, Chaz beats him out just by a little bit, 14 to 13 over Kiermeyer. And I've always considered Kiermeyer a great player. Uh, I really value defense a lot. I think it's super underrated just in the scheme of baseball. Like all we care about is a player's offense. And I don't think that's fair because I think defense is very important. I've always considered Kiermaier a good player. I've always kind of wanted him and now we kind of have him. And this sounds like I'm just gushing about Kiermaier and Chas McCormick. Let me just only gush about Chas McCormick. He also, this was very strange to me. He had the second best hard hit percentage on the team at 49.2, which that's really good. Chaz hit the ball hard a lot. His exit velocity was fifth on the team and his barrel percentage was sixth. Though He's clearly making solid contact. I think he's just a tad bit unlucky. Uh, Chaz is another player. I, I mentioned Bregman that I think he's going to have a very nice season. I think Chaz is going to have a great 2022. I'm super excited to see him grow with us, especially because he kind of came out of nowhere to me. Like I hadn't heard much about him until like late 2020. And then 2021, he was a great player for us. Uh, one of the best defensive outfielders in the league, probably top 10, just like defensive center fielders, I would say, easily center field, maybe just the outfield in general. I thought he was fantastic. So my rating is going to be a little bit higher than you might think, just because I really, really appreciate that good a defense. So I'm going to put Chaz at 6.5 out of 10. So now moving over to left field, we have Michael Brantley. He's just an interesting player. I He's not the most exciting player. He just does hitting right. I will die on the hill that Michael Brantley is the best pure hitter in baseball. Do you want to get better at hitting? Watch Michael Brantley. Simple as that. Uh, watch his film. His head movement, it or lack thereof, he just doesn't move his head. His vision on tracking the ball as it comes to the plate is perfect. Uh, he doesn't strike out. I mean, he's third best K percentage in Major League Baseball behind only Kevin Newsom and the contact king himself, David Fletcher, which is very good company. Uh, also, side note, the Astros actually have three of the top nine at K-rate, which was Brantley, Yuli, and Altuve. They just don't like striking out all that much. Go figure. Also, his expected batting average at 312, which was second best in the league behind Freddie Freeman, now a Dodger, which is a cursed image, by the way. His defense can best be described as inoffensive. It's okay. It's not good or anything. It's just Fine. I've never viewed him as like a liability, and he did have that awesome play back in the ALCS of 2019. So like, he's not a bad defender. He's just an okay one. But again, he's never been like a problem in left field where you're like, man, we gotta, you gotta pull him out of the field. He can't defend anymore. I would also call Michael Brantley a set it and forget it player in the sense that like, he just doesn't change that much. His WRC plus numbers, his on base percentage, just don't really change all that much. Since becoming an Astro, his on-base percentage has been 372, 364, and 362. His WRC Plus has been 3, or 132, 133, and 123. I, you put Brantley out there and left. You put him in the second spot of the hitting order, and you say to yourself, all right, we don't have to worry about that position or that part of the batting order for the rest of the year. He stays healthy, and he's a metronome. And that's just 
a great thing to have. I mean, Dusty Baker doesn't have to worry about left field or his position at all. And unlike other players who have their ups and downs, and I'm not saying that as a bad thing, Brantley just stays always consistent. He's just always marching in a straight line. And that's a really nice thing. You can't really put a price on ease of mind for management, Dusty Baker, and fans knowing that Michael Brantley is just going to be solid as a rock out there in left field. His offense is good, and his defense is good enough to get away with. The, uh, the defense does bring him down from like a really elite rating, but I still think Michael Brantley is a great player. Could have been an all-star last year, I felt, but still just a really nice player to have out there in the outfield for the Astros. So I'm going to give him a 7.5 out of 10. And the last member of the outfield who we're going to talk about in this video, Jake Myers. So, uh, Jake is not going to be ready for opening day. Uh, it's not a, oh man, he's going to be out for the first two months of the season injury. It's a, he might not be ready for the first like week or two, but it's nothing to be really concerned about. And, uh, all right, so here's the thing. You like Chaz McCormick? He's Chaz McCormick, just with a different name. The triple slashes for the two of them are nearly identical. They are so close, it is not worth comparing the two. Uh, it is a .003 difference in batting average, .004 in OBP, and .009 in slugging percentage. Their OPS pluses are the exact same at 107. As for defense, you like Chaz McCormick? He's Chaz McCormick, just on a smaller scale, because I think he played 50 games this past season, whereas McCormick played like 107. But... You take the numbers that Jake Myers had, you multiply them by the games that McCormick had, and they're nearly identical. Chaz has the slight edge, but it's very, very close. It's honestly hilarious. Uh, the only reason I'm not going to give him the same as I gave Chaz is because, again, he only played about half the games, but I'm not going to give him half the rating because that just is unfair. He was great for the games we had him in. He seemed to take the spot right over from uh, Miles Straw, and he and McCormick both played that role wonderfully I was very happy with him and I think him as a fourth outfielder if that's your fourth outfielder you got a fantastic outfield I'm gonna give Chas McCormick a 5 out of 10 for 2021 and so caps the second part of the grading series uh the next one is going to be the starting rotation and then we will finish the series off with our relief pitching so that's really all I have thank you all so very much for watching I hope you all have an absolutely fantastic day and as always Ghost Rose.